Hey, it's Chris Larson. I'm going to show you how to use LabVIEW Web Services. I'm using LabVIEW 2013. Um, should be the same for 2014 um, when that gets released next week at NI Week. That's going to be exciting. Anyways, um, this is ad hoc. So I'm just going to click and build a web service, no script, um, just as we go here. So I started with a blank project. I don't even have a VI in it. So I'm going to save that. Um, because we're going to need a folder structure when we start building out this project. So uh, put it in the project folder and I will name it uh, Web Service. So now in my project folder, I have my LabVIEW Web Service. And in here, I'm going to create another folder, new folder. Um, this is going to be my public um, assets. So in the public assets, I will have a new file text document and it will be called index.html. Yes. And I will edit that with Notepad++. Nope, I don't need an update. And in here, I will just have h1 lab view web service h, and then close my h1. And that's all that web page will show. So now, if I close that, um, it defaults to open in Chrome. Uh, I'm going to open it with Internet Explorer. There. Ah. No, I don't want to make Internet Explorer my default browser. There it is, LabVIEW Web Service. Very simple web page. Now if I go back to LabVIEW, new web service, and sticking with the RESTful um, kind of structure, I'm going to name this V1 for version 1, because this is going to show up in the URL when I'm all done. So it's going to be whatever my URL is, slash v1 and then slash whatever um, my endpoints are. And so I'll call this v1. If uh, later I upgrade and I want to make sure that v1 is still available, I can make a v2 and have the new programs access the v2 while v1 still works. So this is good if I have to support um, the legacy v1 version while uh, migrating everything to version 2. So from the web service, I'm going to add a public content folder. And that's why um, back here in my project, I made this public file. And I will choose that for my public content folder. And in there is my index.html. So now, at this point, I'm done. That's a web service. I serve up a static web page. Now it's available at port 8001. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to open up Internet Explorer. No, I don't need it to be my default. And here's the address. Because I'm in debug mode, it's going to be the home address of my computer. So if you ever seen the t-shirts, 127.0.0.1, there's no place like 127.0.0.1. It's kind of a computer joke. And then the port here I do, colon 8001. Hit enter. Nothing's there because that's the root. Remember, v1 slash. And there's my index.html at um, localhost 127.0.0.1 port 8001 slash v1 for the name of my web service. And then it defaults to index.html. So it's redundant, but I can type in index.html here, and that's the same resource. So web browsers know if you don't specify anything after that final slash, it'll look for an index.html. So cool. That's a web service serving up a static page. Um, not necessarily very useful, uh, but it works well. So now I'm going to stop that and make sure. It, yep, so it's stopped. So now it's stopped, and I refresh. I should get an error. Yes. 404 in uh, web speak means can't find that resource. So 
now I can add an endpoint, a VI. Here's a very simple VI. A request comes in, and I am just going to respond with, what shall I respond with? I'll respond with a numeric value. I'll just tie that into there. And I will save this in my project folder. And I will name it number. Okay. So now that's a simple get on the number. And if I want to show method URL, it's going to be, oh, it's a control so I can set the number's value. So if I copy that, close, start my web service. All right, everything's running port 8001. And I'm going to make some space so we can see all this happening at the same time. So there's my numeric, and here is my public index.html. That still works. I'm going to add a new tab. I'm going to paste in my new value of 5. For some reason, that didn't work. Just do a get on it. No, oh, why is that port 8001? Eight, 8, That's what it should be. Response, there's no response because it's a control. So we say numeric, that's the name of the control down here, equals value 5. And now you can see it's updated to value 5. Or I can see it equals value 70. And now you see it's a value of 70. So this is a way for me to input values from a web page to LabVIEW using this um, URL here and the parameters here. And this name of this numeric is kind of special. You can't have spaces in a URL. They show up as a percent %20 and wreak havoc on any kind of logic you want to do. So when you're naming your LabVIEW controls, make sure there's no spaces. Lowercase is okay, uppercase is okay, any combination of that is okay, um, but just no spaces. So that's stop that. And now let's add another VI, and we will add this time an indicator. And we have to link it here and say file save as number and we'll say number um, we'll call it index indicator okay so now I will show method URL and here it is and for some reason we want local debug there we go Copy that, close that, uh, move this off to the side so we can see it while I'm adjusting the values. I will start the web service. Now it's started. I'll refresh this page to make sure it's working. Um, this is set to 70 right now. Set that to 12. Ready, go, 12. Oh, I guess I have to verify first that it's running. Hello. There, updated to 12. It takes a while to get these things running. All right, now I'm going to ask for the value of numeric indicator, and this should return XML with uh, the numeric and its current value. There it is. Numeric, current value is zero. And I don't think I can update while it's running, so I will stop it, and then I will say value of 14, and run it again. Start. Make sure I hey, OK that pop-up message. And now when I say, what is the value of 
indicator, it's still zero. I guess it didn't take that new value. Well, anyways, you get the point. So there's how you do it. Uh, you want to adjust values in LabVIEW from a web page. You create a control and you wire it up to um, the uh, icon. And then if you want to read values, do the same thing, but you create an indicator and you'll get the value out in XML by default. And later I'll show you, um, perhaps in another video, how to change that to another format such as JSON, which might be easier to use with some of the new web technologies.